Okay, so welcome back. And uh, in the last video, we saw how we did the minimum requirement for the lab sheet one, which is uh, an adder. Now, the other, uh, the two, the, in this video, we're going to do some of the bonus requirements. And then I think we're going to do only these three things only, which is variables, uh, set specific variables, and then use functions. Now, if you actually do this, then this part will become much, much easier now. It's just a matter of just calling the function one more time. So I guess I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it as well. I'll leave the validation part for you to do. Now, we actually did the validation in the class for those who attended. So you should be able to do this as well and then achieve all the bonuses. And I know what you're thinking. Sir, you've done the whole thing yourself. So how is that a bonus? Well, it's fine. Um, I'm in a mood. So let's do it. So let's get back to the question, to the program, and then now we're going to do is we're going to first of all make sure that the limit is um, not hard coded. Hard coded is this. See, the limit is actually number here. If let's say we want to change the limit for whatever reason, or I would like to change the limit to different for A and B, we'll have to come to the code again and then program it or hard code it one more time. And this is not a good practice. You would like to make your program um, as efficient as possible with minimal hard coding or tinkering as we go along. So, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to actually allow the user to set the limit. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come to the very beginning. Now, you see, in order or before you ask the user to input a number or the integer, it we, we need to also set the limit. Is that right? So. We're going to have to come here and then ask the user before that the user inputs the integer or the number. They'll have to input the integer, the limit itself. So please define the limit for the first integer. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually ask the user to define the limit and then we're going to capture that value here as lim a. Sounds like a Chinese dude, but it's not. So lim a. Lim a means obviously limit for a. So once that has been defined, then we can actually come here now and tell the user to input a number that is less than the limit for a. So how are we going to do that? We're going to simply have to come and do this. Uh, we're going to have to insert lim a within this statement. Actually, we did something. What are we going to do right now? We cannot put 8 right now because the user might input a different number here. Right? So instead, we need to insert that number here. Well, we already did something similar here. You see, if you look here, right, you see that we have a string. And then we put a number in between and then a string again. So what we're going to do is something similar. We're going to put this guy instead of this number 8 right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut open here between those guys. And we're going to put this guys right here. Oops, they're not this one, this one. And in between, we're going to put lim a. And that's it. So what's going to happen is that the user will basically, and then everything else is the same. So, oh yeah, forget, so I forgot. Let me come here and do, now this is the limit. When we check the limit now, it's going to be 8 anymore. It's going to be the value that we hard-coded. We're just going to have to do lem a. So here's what's going to happen. First of all, we're going to tell the guy, uh, let's read the program and see what's going on. Hello and welcome to the program. And then um, please define the limit for the first number, for the first integer, and that will be lem a. Then we ask the guy to input the number, but at the same time, we're displaying the limit that they just entered here. Then we use the value, which is a, and then we check if it's a is less than the limit that the user defined themselves. And then we do the usual stuff that we did in the first program, and then we display it. Let's do that. Let's run this program. Compile. Still compiling successfully, and then and build again. successfully and execute. Well, uh, define the limit. Uh, in the first program, the limit was eight. I'm gonna make it five or six. And then, okay, now it says, you see, it took the value that I just inputted and it put it here. So input the number that is less than six. I'm gonna put seven, uh, seven. Well, 
and valid entry because 7 is R. We didn't update this part. I'll, I'll get back to that later. So we're going to get back and put 5, and that will work. Okay? So now I have to go back here inside this program here. We have to actually change it. Now I don't want to repeat this part again, styling. So it's going to be uh, integer mass. You know what? Let's just do that. Come back here and do this. Copy this whole thing and put it integer. Yeah, I think that will do the trick. And then this one right here, yes. Yep, that will do the trick. That's all right. And then compile again, build again, and execute again. So, okay, so uh, let's define the limit. So the limit will be, in this case, 7. Input the number that is less than 7. Okay, uh, you know what? I'm going to put 8 for fun. No, it has to be less than 7. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, you know what? I don't care. Uh, no, 0 is less than 7. Put 9, 8 again. No, it has to be less than 7. So 5. Yep, yeah, 5 is good. Okay, it works. So we, we were able to do this. Let's repeat the same process now for B. Well, the easiest way is just copy paste everything, but then uh, I don't want to do that. So basically, I'm going to first of all come and do this. So hopefully, now you will see the value of defining everything in one line like this. We just can add variables, is that right? So then what we're going to do now is uh, the first integer here, which is the second integer. Uh, I'm going to copy this line right here, copy, I'm going to put it here, and here, and here. But instead of A, we're going to put B here, and here, and here. Okay, and of course, limb B, not limb biscuit. Okay, so did I forget anything? No, right? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute. So if I wanted to do something else, but I'll, I'll do that. what problem? What's the problem? Did I do limb B is defined? What's the problem? Oh, I get it now. I did not add this line, which is, we did not capture the user value. So this line right here, I forgot to add. So let's get back here and, and do this again. And this time we're gonna do second integer. And I, I thought I was, for, I forgot something. I thought I like, there is something missing here. So, yep, now it's gonna work, build again. And run again. So let's define the limit for the first one. You know what? I'm going to make it 8. Okay. Input the second number, which is less than 8. Okay. That's a fine. Okay. Please define the limit for the second integer, 4. So integer number, so 4, 7 or 8. No, it has to be less than 4. Okay. 2. And it worked. So 5 plus 2 is 7. But as you can see, the area here is cluttered. First of all, um, I'll get back to this in a minute. So where is that? Yeah. So actually, we already achieved these two together at the same time. We allow the user to set the limit for two variables, and we allow the user to actually do two separate limits. Now, I could have actually, instead of having limb A, limb B, I could have just put limb, one value, and put the same value for limb here as well as here. It would be one singular limit. But uh, simply by defining it into A and B, two separate values, then I can actually define two separate limits. You know I mean? Also, um, you can you have to say uh, define the limit, and that will be the same limit used for A and B. Right here was already focused limit for first number, limit for second number, but then the message would have been limit for all. Okay, mm, you want to see that? Okay, let's just see that. So I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna you know what? I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna actually. Uh, do a little bit of magic, so copy this and comment this line out. And instead of limb A and limb B, we're just going to do limb. And I'm 
also gonna uh, comment this line out so I'm gonna copy it and come here and do this so input define the limit and that's it uh, you know what I don't want to delete everything here's gonna fine let's do this so this will be limb only limb and limb limb and limb and limb here again and then there's no need for this because it's the same limit and this one right here there's no need and then it over here will have to be same limit same limit and the same limit and that's it oh yeah here also same limit and then save and run uh, we made a mistake somewhere oh yeah must have left one of those yeah okay uh, m okay successful successful and then run so let's say define the limit well, in this case we just one limit so five so now input less than five okay three now into the second digit also less than five it's the same limit that we defined earlier so i'm going to put six no it has to be less than five okay three again okay so three plus three is six is that clear so then that works so here i am i already achieved this requirement and let's get back to that other version with where you can set multiple limits so Control Z forever until we get back to this version. So, oh yeah, this one should be Control uh, should be B here. And this is what I just did just now. I just Control Z forever until we get back to that last version. Control Z is like undo. So compile again, successful. Build again, successful. And now uh, this one actually tells me to run the program. So here we go. Run. So. Define limit one, so this will be six. What happened? Oh, six. And less than six, okay, four, define number four, and then that will be five, and then limit number five, it will be three, and here we go. Okay? Uh, although this worked, and this achieved our target here, but there's something that I don't like. Let's take a look at the output again. See how all the numbers are cluttered again, right? Um, I lost it's very easily you can get lost here and you lose track which one are the two numbers uh, don't get me wrong yes you can read through the lines and figure out oh, this is the first one this is the second one but then uh, that will waste a lot of time programming is all about efficiency so I don't even want to look above here I want to see my first and two numbers here so I want this last line to say the sum of three and four is seven straight away like that so instead we have to come and do this here so what we're going to do is i'm going to borrow this and instead of first i'm going to put here and instead of second i'm going to put this guy here and instead of limb a and then b we're just going to put a and b that's it so what's going on is that this is a construct okay so we're going to say see out the sum of a and b is uh, there's no need for this now is the summation uh, some of you are already looking at this and say this is ugly there's another way of doing this yes but i'll move on i'll get back to that in a minute so or i'll get back to that in python actually so for now okay so sum bulk or build execute and here we go so the first integer uh, set the limit okay let's go for eight define greater than limit a nine no eight is also now okay so five okay that works so set the limit here uh not 46 <laughs> let's just say five okay less than five so six no and then finally 22 okay so see you don't even have to look anywhere i just have to read this last line right here the sum of four and two is six and that's it you don't have to go anywhere and search for your two numbers. Make sense? All right. Another another housekeeping thing I want to do is uh, right here. I just want to add one more line here. 
All right, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna add one more line just for clarity. Okay, so run it one more time. Compile, build, execute, and here we go. So define the first limit, that will be six, so four, divide number five, and then two, and then here we go. The summation of four and three is seven. Okay, let's see what else. So I've done this and done this. Now, rather than repeat the code, let's do a function. Okay, so what we want to do right now is that um, if you look at the code, you would see there's a lot of repetition here. Okay, hello world is here, but then if you look at everything here, there's a lot of repetition. Is that right? In fact, the whole line, the whole block is repeated. Now, we could not put, we need to decide right now, how much of this code can you put in a function and use it, and how much is something we cannot escape. So you see here, and here, it's not exactly the same line, but, uh, Nothing you can do here. I mean, you can, but it's going to be too complex to write that function. So instead, what we're going to do is this part right here, this while loop right here, we're going to have to check again. You see, look at the code here. Um, this right here can be written into a function. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, uh, sorry, I'm going to basically take this whole code and put it in a function. And this function, what it's going to do is going to, first of all, is going to take two values. It's going to take the value for A and the value for the limit. Oh, sorry, the, it's going to take the value of a number and the value of its own limit. And it's going to perform this job. And if the number is good, it's going to return to me. Uh, it's gonna, basically, it's going to do this job right here for me. So instead, I'm going to take this function somewhere here. Uh, C++ functions. Where is it? Yep, right here. Function parameters. Uh, no, just functions for now. So function, you have to create this function right here. Our function, okay, another decision you have to realize, you have to understand, ask yourself, does the function give you back a number? Will our validation function give us something in return? Uh, I have to say that it does return A, right, if it's valid, right? Or, you know what, let's just do a void function for now. Okay, I'll get back to that later. Now, a void function, essentially, it's a function that does not return anything, but it does a job. And in this case, it's going to be validate number. So, what is the validation number? Uh, I have to, before you write the program, to explain in your own word what does this function does. So, uh, takes num, which is in this case the number, and lim, the, okay, it's not that good, takes a number and a limit and checks if number is within the limit. Um, there's another version of this, which is pseudocode, but um, it's a little bit if you advance. So what this function takes uh, num lim and checks if lim if num num is greater than or equal. Is that right? Uh, this this is not really necessary that you do, but just for your own organization, just for for your organization's sake, just for your thoughts. Uh, at some point in your programming life, uh, there's no need for this, but um, this is just for a matter of you to be organized. Uh, if you want to write it in your own words like this, or in your in a little bit of code or pseudocode, either way is fine, as long as you understand what you need to do. So in this case, it takes. Takes means it's right here. So num lim. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to basically take this whole while function right here, copy, and put it here. The while loop itself is going to be inside the function. Now, where is no a and lim a? It's basically going to be num and lim. That's it. 
an invalid entry integer must be less than lem and enter the oh, we put a num first integer uh you have to sacrifice this re re-enter the integer yeah re re-enter less than lem and assign to num uh, we're gonna have a problem with this but i'm gonna Get back to this in a minute. We're gonna have a problem with this code. I'll show you why later. But first, let's just run this program and see how it works. Um, let's just run it. Okay. Compilation failed. Oh, we didn't. We. Oh, yeah. These two were defined here, so you have to declare their variable time. I forgot that this is C or C++. So hopefully now this would work. Okay, so now we're good. Uh, in C, I will declare a variable. Even if it's a parameter variable like this, it has to declare the type of it. So this would work now. Uh, nothing is going to change in the program. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, I created the function and everything. And it's right here. And it's all good. But let's run it. And you're going to see that at the end of this program, or the, or that absolutely nothing changed. So three, and this is the second one. Uh, let's just uh, put four and put five here. No, OK, put three here. And then what happened is, is that nothing happened. This program did not, this function did not do anything. And the reason for that is that although you created a function, uh, this is very important about functions. You create a function, yes, but you never called it. You just validate number, you'll have to call it. So I'm going to come here now and call it. So I'm going to say validate. Oh, Genie is telling me already. Oh, here's the one. And validate num takes two integers. So I'm going to give it a and lim a. And this. And I'm going to remove all of this and uh, oh, what's going on oh this is uh, okay, so put it here for now just temporarily put it here and then what do you think is going to happen so the idea is that validate num okay we're going to come here now going to take we're going to ask these to input limit and all this stuff and now we have two values a and limit a so we're going to actually capture these two values a and limit a and give it to this function okay what's going to happen then well, we're going to go up here, validate number. And inside this validate function, it's going to come to the while loop, and which is going to run forever. Until, uh, basically, and every time the number is going to be checked. So, OK, let's say the number is checked. Well, if the number is OK, then it's good. If not, then actually ask the user again. And then it's going to reassign. You're going to ask, reassign the value again. So this while loop is going to keep on running until the value is correct. All right? So. If you're already thinking what I'm thinking, and uh, you're telling yourself, sir, no, I know what you're thinking, but just run with it. So enter the first integer, 5, OK. Into the second number less than 5. Let's do, um, let's do a less than term. So in the past, this worked, right? It still worked, OK. Oh, OK. Control C. Uh, let's get back to uh, actually. All right, so we can try again. So um, three or four, then six. Invalid entry. Re-enter. Four. Re-entry. Three. Okay. Three. Okay. Define the second integer. Five. Okay. Third and second integer will be less than six. Okay, that will be four. And the sum first integer is your first integer is four, and then six plus four is ten. Um, actually, I have a problem, but I'm surprised that it's actually worked. Uh, okay, after we validate the problem, oh yeah, because after this, this came on, right? Um, yeah. Okay, it worked, but. I want you to pay attention to something. Okay, run this program again. I want you to keep track of 
you know what uh, before I do this let's take B out of the game for now can I take uh, okay let's run the program uh, okay let's just start with this okay uh, define the limit so five now pay attention the number should be less than five we all agree on that is that right so I'm gonna initially gonna give a seven okay seven clear all right run it it's not gonna work I know just now we're gonna change it to something that will work let's say three okay check this out it's still seven so once again we started with this we set the limit to five and then we put integer a as seven it didn't work because it's not less than five we went through the, the evaluation as usual and then we put a correct value, which is three, which should be less than five, which worked, but then the value is still seven. What's going on here? This actually introduces the concept of variable scope. So a variable scope is what's going on here. See, pay attention for me now. So we start the program in the main. Although this function is written before, but this actually is the main function always runs first. Even though that this function actually is written before the main, it doesn't matter. The C compiler will always run main first. So we run here, we ask, welcome the user, and we ask the user to set the limit. Okay, this is seven, and then we set, uh, sorry, uh, five, and then we set here as seven. Yeah, and then we take these two numbers, and we go to the validation function. Okay, so now this is the number, which is in this case uh, five, and this is seven. And now we come to these two num and lim and then we organize we do the checking here and everything and then we are done now the problem is is that right here the value that was updated is num you know what i mean this is the value that was updated or corrected but this is not the value of a you see what happened is that after you do this we go over there we change the numbers everything here but that updates that happened here happened inside this function only because what happened after that is that after this changes happen here, the, the function come back and it comes back to this line. What is it? It comes back to this line where we called it. And then it's going to actually print out the value for A. But the value for A is the same one that we entered in the beginning. So, but it checked. Yeah, it checked. But that checking and changing happened only here. You get what I mean? And that's why we have a problem. And the reason why for this is happening because the variables that you see in front of you here, which is num and lim, are only valid within this function, and this is called uh, the scope of the scope of the variables. So there are several ways of solving this problem. Of course, the way of solving this problem is is to use a itself as the variable, um, but this is usually not a good practice. Or we could actually then return the value. So. Uh, what does that mean is that instead of using a void function, we actually return the value. So what we're going to do is that actually we're going to come back here and say uh, that, yeah, we can actually try and do this num equals to, or sorry, a equal to num, a equal to num. Yeah, this will update the value for a. Now, a has already been defined here, which is in the main scope. So when we call the function, which is right here, the value for A has already been, is already going to be defined. So what's going to happen here, once we actually work on updating the value, the value of num has been updated, and then we come here and then update the value for A. And that will actually solve our problem. And that will actually resolve the issue of scope. I hope so. <laughs> so run or failed. Uh, a was not declared in this scope. Ah, that's lovely. You can actually see the concept of scope right there. You see, what's going on is that, um, yeah, I was actually wrong. Oh, once again, this is a symptom of me working with Python lately. See, variable was declared inside the main function. When you call it in here, it doesn't know what it is. What it is. So there is one simple solution to this, is that we take this definition outside the function altogether and put it here and that would mean that it's basically out i'm not sure actually this would work but <laughs> uh try uh, i know this works in other programming languages but let's see if this works now oh where is that 
Ah, success. So now it, this is going to work. Oh, no. Oh, compilation failed. It cannot open. Oh, uh, this is running. So let's close it. So, okay. Successful. Successful. And then execute. So now let's try this one more time. So the limit is going to be 5. I'm going to put a 7 here, which is or 6, which is greater than 5. This is going to fail, right? Now we are inside the function, okay? So I'm going to put a 3, which is, should be less than 5. So now the value is 3. It's corrected. It actually has been updated. So I'm going to recap one more time what happened. We, In order to make sure that the scopes work, so I put the variables right outside here. This makes them available in all functions. Now, if somebody you think, some of you are thinking, sir, why can't we just put a here and here and here? Why do we have to use a different variable inside this function? This is generally not a good practice because actually, no, this is still not a good practice because this function is not just for a. So that's why this is actually not a good practice. So instead, I'm going to do a return. So return no. Yes, this is a better practice. So here, uh, num actually is an integer, right? So the whole function now is going to... Okay, first of all, why this is not a good idea? You see, yeah, which means also this is, wasn't a good practice. So let's get back to putting it all here. Generally speaking, it's not a good idea to put your stuff outside of the main and... Um, Although this solved the problem, but this is not a good practice either. You see, right here, I put a itself inside the function. That defeats the very purpose of using local variables. And now you're thinking, so what's the big deal? It worked. Well, it works for a, but what if I want to use b? Yeah, or any other number. We need a function that will work for any numbers. So this practice right here is not good. Instead, what we're going to do, we're going to use return. So return. So, uh, what am I doing? Return is not here, but we can actually return here. So, the void function does not return anything. So, that's why it's called a return. But here, we're going to return num itself. And right here, we're going to put integer. So, now this function now actually returns a number, returns something, returns an integer called, which is equal to this value. So, how are we going to actually call this? Well, this function right now, will give you back a value. And that will only give you the corrected value. So in this case, I'm just going to do this. Uh, this value is going to call this value. I'm not sure this is going to work. Well, success, compile, success. So what's going to happen here is that, OK, I define the limit, and I define the a. Then I'm going to actually call a. So what's going to happen is that this a is equal to this function. What does that mean is that, this variable, the value for a is going to be updated. It's going to equal to whatever value we're going to get back from this function. Usually, this is how you use a function when you have a return. When you actually return, means you have a variable. So this now, this function, is going to go and do this whole lovely work. It's going to give me back a value for num. And that will be actually updating the value for a. So when I print it here, it's going to be the updated version of a and not the old a. If you missed what I just said, you can rewind the video. So compile, I did that already, okay, run, and then execute. So define the value for a, okay, uh, limit, sorry, so that's 5, 6, no, 6, no, so 3, and the value is 3. Worked. So once again, let's recap what happened. So what happened was is that, okay, I defined the limit, okay, define the actual value, and then over here, what I'm doing is I'm going to basically update the value for a. What does that mean? We're going to actually check the value. If the value then by simply it's going to be whatever value this function gives us in the end. So by calling this function, I'm going to give it a and the limit. It's going to go here, do this lovely work, and then give me back the updated value, which is the number. And that will be given back here, and then it will be reassigned to the value of a. Now, the lovely thing of this is that I can now repeat this line to as many functions or as many numbers that I want. So now I can just take this whole thing, copy, and come back here and put B and B 
and B here, and we're good to go. Now, some of you will be saying, so why don't we just put this line in the function itself? We can. We can actually do that right now. So I'm going to take this whole line, X, and put it in here, outside of the loop, not inside of the loop. Your, not your integer, no more first integer. Oh yeah, okay, your integer is, and it's not A anymore, it's num. And then return num. And if you're thinking, sir, if we put this here, why we still need to return the value in a minute? Uh, this will come back in a minute. So then I come back here, uh, check and update value. Check value, yeah. Now this is too small, so it can actually come now to put here. And then the comment will be here. And then here will be, yeah, till date B. And now we don't need this. Now we just copy this whole thing again. Copy and V. And then put V and V and V. And the reason why we still need to return the value and update A and B because we still need to do this part right here. We need to do the summation. Remember that? And then basically sum here. See how the program now is actually a lot more cleaner now using functions? So now uh, we can actually then uh, organize. Um, you know what? Oh, yeah, you cannot return to function. You cannot return to them. Okay, so that's it. I would like to. I was thinking, is there a way we can actually not repeat this line as well? But um, no, because they are not the same code. Because you have first and first and second, second, so it's not the same code. Okay, and also because you're capturing, you're returning two different values. You cannot return multiple values. Okay, so, excuse me. So I think this is it actually. So this is good enough. We have used a function, and uh, let's run it one more time. So compile, build, and execute. So welcome to the program. Five. Okay. No. 5 is not less than 5, 6 is not less than 5, so 2. Okay, so that's the second integer limit, so let's go for 7 here. So I'm going to put an 8, 9, 7, no, so I'm going to put a 3, yes. So your the sum of 3 and 3 is 6, and what? And we did it using a function. So this is the validation function is right there. The main function is right here where we input the value for the user. And also we have we actually uh, basically set, set up the function. And that's it. So that's basically the program. Uh, we have achieved basically everything. Oh yeah, this last one right here. Uh, this is very easy now. Uh, I think this is very easy now to do because now that you already have a function, all it's just a matter of do is just copy and paste and modify. I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna show you how to do it. So now that you already have this, you have to add another value here. You have to repeat this whole thing one more time down there, but you have to modify the code to say third, third, and C, 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 and all this stuff. And also you have to modify this code here and this function to be plus C, and then add one more for C as well. It's too easy, then I'm not going to do it, then I'll leave you to do it yourself. So I hope this uh, can help you in your training, and I hope this can actually help you out working on C. Now, by the way, I just want to comment. What's the point of this program right here, an adding program? This actually program trains you on several elements or functionalities that we're going to use throughout. Uh, there was an if statement here, but we changed it into a loop, so you already work on if statements. Then now you work with a loop. You also use a function. Uh, we talked about the concept of variables. Uh, we captured user input, and then we also worked on the concept of scopes or variable scope. You worked with different kind of functions, and also we worked on libraries. Uh, we didn't do a lot of math, uh, but uh, essentially, uh, if we did, then we have to add this one more library, which is math. But anyway, this actually works, and uh, I wish you all the best in doing the assignment. Now, once again, for the lab sheet, or for the for this lab sheet. Um, I sort of until here already done, but you can actually complete this one easily now and then add the validation the same way we did it in the classroom. Okay, so all the best for you and uh, see you in the next video.